subscribe, subscribe. This video is sponsored by Card Market, Europe's largest online marketplace for trading card games. All right, uh, today we're going to have a special video. We're going to do an interview with uh, Felipe here, who won the Latin American Championship. Hello, guys. Yeah, so if you want to give a quick introduction to yourself. Uh, my name is Felipe Arce. I'm from Santiago, Chile. Uh, I was the champion for the One Piece uh, final championship uh, Latin America. Uh, this tournament was in Saturday, Sunday that just passed. And it was just a surreal experience. It was my first major tournament. Uh, haven't played any TCGs before. I uh, have a full-time job. I'm a dentist in real life, uh, and it was my first uh, major tournament, so I was like really nervous, but it was something surreal. Uh, this week uh, has happened many things that I, I couldn't even imagine a week ago. So I am extremely happy and, and I'm grateful for, you, for all your knowledge that made me uh, perform really, really, really well in the tournament. Oh, well, thanks for that. And yeah, congrats again, by the way. First place is crazy. Uh, so you, you <laughs> highlighted Purple Luffy, right? Purple Luffy, yeah. yeah. Um, it was a deck like I told... No, I didn't tell you, but I, I've been playing this this uh, game since October. Uh, mm -hmm. First date of November, I think. It was still in OP04 format. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Sebastian introduced me to the game. Uh, I was, I am a big, uh, huge One Piece fan. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I have like all the the mangas, the mm. not the cards, the the books, mm -hmm. the manga books, uh, and I've watched the the series a couple of times. So when he introduced me to the to the game, I was like instantly. Yes, I want to play, I want to play, and my first deck was Rebecca. Oh, interesting. You switched Rebecca. from Rebecca to Luffy? <laughs> I switched from Rebecca to Luffy. Uh, like, it was uh, in the end of OPO4 format. Mm -hmm. I started immediately... I realized that in Japan, uh, they were like one or two sets in, in advance. Mm -hmm. So I started investigating uh, what will be played in the next few months in the meta we are right now and uh, I saw like like the, the, the decks that were or the leaders that were topping in Japan and Luffy and Zoro are my 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 favorite characters from the game so except from the anime so uh, it was really a no brain for me to to go for for Luffy uh, Rebecca was uh, just like it was really cheap right <laughs> <laughs> it was a really cheap deck to to start uh, and i think it also helped me that it has uh, uh it is hard to play so it was not like i i was really good at the beginning of the game so i think rebecca helped me in that in that regard yeah i think rebecca being the first deck you play like you have to learn a lot <laughs> how to play that deck because it plays differently than any other leader because you can't attack, right? Yeah. It's like a mini Saka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before. A yeah, mini Saka Suki, yeah. Uh, when I started the game, uh, to me, it mattered really much uh, the, the characters in the cards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to play like villains or, right. or stuff like that. And Rebecca had like the the G4 Luffy, uh, Savo, and all that cool cards that I still have in my in my collection. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'm the same way. That's why I like playing Zoro too and Luffy. So I can agree yeah. with you there. Um, I, w I was looking to play Zoro, but <laughs> but it was really expensive in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, Purple Luffy is pretty expensive now, right? With the the blocker queens and stuff. But yeah, were you able to yeah. get them? Before the price went up, uh, no. <laughs> okay, so you had to. Pay no, I had price. to play. I, I had to pay like uh, 
roughly forty dollars each. Oh my god! So uh, it was a barrier to for me to pick uh, purple Luffy like my my main deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like I told you, uh, I I really start investing a lot of time in the game. Uh, uh, and when I decided I wanted to play for for real, I had to pay the cash that the, that the queens uh, cost. Yeah, and it looks like it paid off first place. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. It pay, it paid off like, like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, do you mind giving us like a deck breakdown of the deck you played at the uh, Latin American Championships? Oh no, sure, sure. Let me change my my camera, and I have here the. The trophy. Oh, the trophy. Wow, it's so pretty. Oh my god. It's really heavy. <laughs> it's made like of, of glass. It's 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 really it's really nice. It comes in a really fancy box and it's one of the prices I, I also intend to, to keep. Nice. You're gonna pass it to your kids <laughs> when they get older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they when they know what what are they touching, so but <laughs> they can they can very easily break it. Yeah, that's true. Keep it safe. Okay, so uh, here's my leader, oh. Monkey D. Luffy. Uh, I feel like uh, this deck is very versatile. Uh, you can play very aggressive or very defensive if you want, depending on the on the matchup. So uh, it adapts really well to my playstyle. So and and the main reason, like I told you before, it was like Luffy is my one of my favorite. Uh, uh, characters from the game, from the anime, so um, I wouldn't ever play Sakasuki, <laughs> only <laughs> right. for that reason. <laughs> he killed Ace. <laughs> he killed Ace, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'll leave it like here, and uh-huh. well, uh, in first I will show you my forecast. Uh, this deck has, that, uh, has not a uh, turn one play, so uh, if I go first, if I go second, uh, I don't have a turn one play. My game starts in turn two. Uh, if I go first, are my four cost. The first ones are two scratchments Apu. Mm-hmm. It's like a vanilla four, five, six, six thousand. I have two copies. I have four copies of the blocker law. Mm-hmm. I think it's a very, a very, very good card, uh, especially in the first turns of the game. Uh, most, of, most of the time, uh, people have to counter my my first attack, right? So they can't uh, have seven cards in in hand, and and the risk of playing this low and and losing two two cards and a life. Right. So uh, it's a constant threat in the in the first turns. I I really don't like playing the the dawn effect minus uh, minus one. Uh, even if my my opponent has seven cards, uh, since my main my main strategy for this deck is to to get to ten dawn as as quickly as possible. Is if it's possible in turn four with uh, with Polly with the card I will show later. Uh, my game plan is like really, really easy from from then on. Okay. I so have the law, the advantage. law is the law is just to scare the opponent to counter the first hit, basically, yeah. or to get a, a a first blocker in those matchups like uh, Soro, which mm-hmm. are are very oppressive in the first turns and don't let me uh, use my leader ability with with this. Right. Okay. So that's. Next, I have like the the combo of this deck, which is page one and an ulti. Another card like I I don't want I don't like to play on curve in the first, in the second turn, even if I have two the two in hand, mm-hmm. uh, unless I am in the match with with Sakasuki, mm-hmm. which uh, he can remove both both characters in in his in his second turn. Right. Uh, again. Uh, for the same reason, if I if I I do the Don minus one effect, I I lose advantage in in Don, and I think that is the the best real advantage that this leader has over the other characters in the meta. So uh, I play most of the part just page one. Okay, makes sense. Then 
I have like my 2K counters, but they are really important. With double finger first. Uh-huh. Uh, it is like, uh, again, really important for the for the Sakasuki matchup. Uh, because although it is a, a 4,000 body, it is an additional body. And you always need that when you, if you get this from the trigger, right. you can pay the, the, the cost of the Dome minus one by discarding a card. Uh, and it's another body that can attack brand new, can attack uh, Hina. Uh, and in, it won me a, a very important match in the, in the Swiss rounds. Where I can I can show I can make the scenario later if you want, but uh, I I don't use it just like the 2K counter. I think it's a really great body and it's cool when it when it triggers. Okay, I do feel you, like yellow. Do you always <laughs> trigger it, or is it depending on the situation? Depending on the situation, depending okay. on the okay. situation. Uh, mostly against yellow, I will keep the 2K counter, but oh. against the Takasuki match it like I I think it's the 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 most hard the most hardest matchup for for my deck uh, okay. I think it it's really cool when when it triggers okay cool uh, the next one is like Khalifa which is also a, a really cool cool card uh, it's the same effect as Queen uh, and when I play it I try to uh, in the second in the next turn play the the blocker kit so I can uh, minimize the effect of the dot minus one. Right. And when it's rested, uh, all my opponents' attack uh, go right, right into Khalifa. <laughs> so yeah. they have to they have to remove it of the of the board so I don't keep uh, drawing every every turn because uh, the main. Like this advantage of this deck is like I don't have searchers, I don't have anything to to find a card I need. Mm-hmm. The only thing I can do is uh, search in my life with my leader ability and and my cards that let me draw like this one. So uh, it's not only a two K counter. Uh, I don't play like Pranosuke or all the other two K counters that, that the game. Yeah. Extra guy, I, I play. I play. Okay, okay. I, I have oh, it in my five cost, but right, right. Exactly. So, but but this is a it's a really great body. Also, uh, it has a great, a really nice ability, and it's a blocker on its own. Yeah, makes sense. So you mentioned uh, you don't find value in Fronosuke having rush. You don't really need it. No, I, I don't really need it. Um, yeah, I played it. I tried. It, I tested, <laughs> and it is too expensive. It's five done. I I believe for the yeah. cost and for four K cost <laughs> or. For a 6k, for, you have to put two down, I, I believe. Right, right, to give him rush. To give him rush, so so he's like a 7 down, 6, 6k attack. Right. <laughs> uh, never really use it. Uh, I, I believe that in the in, in a game where I tried to use it when I was testing, I it's really easy to block a, a 6k attack. So mm-hmm. And I invested almost all my down in, in that final attack, so... No, I don't find much sense in, in playing that card. Right, makes sense. Next, um, uh, the heart of my of my deck, that which are my five costs. Many people believe that this deck, um, it's like uh, getting to to ten down quickly to to get a Kaido or a or a big body on board. But I believe, and the way I play this card, the, this cost, the, this deck is by by my five cost. The MVP of this deck is this card. Holy. Holy. If I could go like more copies of this, I will. I will definitely <laughs> use it. It's amazing on curve. I. It's a, basically a seven cost to pay for the ability, which you can play on turn three. Uh, you remove a body, you get a, 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 a 6,000 power body on the board, and you ramp uh, uh, a Don. So the next turn you are in, in, in 10 Don and play another 2 5 cost mm-hmm. or a Kaido, which I, I don't like uh, very much uh, playing on curve. Because like I, like I told you before, uh, I think the main advantage of this deck is 
to have the don advantage. Mm -hmm. And if you have 10 don and you play like uh, Magellan, uh, your opponent is way behind that. Right. So this is the MVP. Next we have like the the blockers. These are staples in every Purple Luffy deck. The four mm -hmm. queens and the four kids. Both amazing cards. Uh, we already talked about the the lack of searcher, so this card let me lets me recycle my my hand, lets me draw two cards, lets me find the pieces I need to go for the game, and it's a six thousand power and a blocker, so really no explanation. Right. Kid, uh, it's the same as uh, as Khalifa. The opponent once plays a kid. The, his whole plan is to remove it as fast as possible, so uh, I can swing mostly every turn with my kid because it will act like a blocker nonetheless. Mm -hmm. They will Thunderbolt as soon as possible and lose a life. Uh -huh. uh, I believe it's a, it's a really good card and it's the best purple card from, from the new set from OPO5. You mentioned you focus on ramping to 10. Do you play queen on curve or do you wait until you're at 10 before minusing down for queen? If I can, I wait. Okay. I wait to play queen. Uh, I don't... My my ideal curve is uh, playing a 4 or 5 cost in my, in my... in my second turn in which I play this guy. This guy mm -hmm. is the only effect I I value in, in curve. Okay. Of the minus one, I know it has been in a in a lot of discussion lately, uh, and a lot of uh, decks are running missile Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, because it's like the the contrary effect. But uh, this this guy is just uh, too powerful against all the meta decks, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, against yellow, you you basically win one turn, mm -hmm. and. And this guy uh, is basically on removal for right. yellow until they get to 10 down and they can attack them. Uh -huh. If they don't get a, a, a Thunderbolt from life or a, a thing like that. Right. So it's uh, it's the only effect I I I love to play on curve, even uh, even if it's down minus one. And I if, if if that's the case and I have to play the poly next turn, I will ramp. Even if I have to go to to two lives or so, I I don't I don't really feel the pressure or, or in the in this tournament I, I don't really feel the pressure in in much games of of being low in life mm -hmm. because that advantage of, of in the next turn having like a queen and a, a kid it's it's really no 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 problem okay and this card over missile Sunday uh, I prefer this card. Uh, I don't believe that the yellow matchup is as easy as uh, everyone seems to think for Purple mm -hmm. Luffy. Mm -hmm. I think it's very dependent on, on the lack of the triggers, like every yellow deck, especially Katakuri. My my most difficult matchup was uh, the semifinal mm -hmm. against an, a Mexican player who played an L. Okay. Uh, and this guy saved me. This guy saved me. Uh, I believe when when NL starts like uh, playing more than one uh, Russian L's, uh -huh. uh, it's basically impossible for me to remove it, uh -huh. and and it's very oppressive to have like seven K swings every turn and and the opponent heal uh, with with which his ability and all the the the, the arms that that NL has. Okay, the Magellan helps slow uh, that down. Exactly. They, it's it's a uh, it's one turn less right. for where where I win some time and I don't affect my curve since I can always use my my ability. Okay. Uh, the last five cost I have is X-Rick. I have two copies. I am starting to test four. Uh, I think it's a really good a really good card. In not all, not only as a, a, a 2k counter, you know, yeah, not even as a body. Uh, his effect when you are at 10 done and you can pay for, for free to for the opening to discard one card, I think mm -hmm. it's really, really good, mm -hmm. especially when you have a, a kid so you can can recover that done. And 
I believe uh, my next change on this list will be to play for X-Drakes. Okay. Uh, this is the heart of my deck. Uh, this is the way I win. Uh, if I don't see my five cost, my game it turns really bad. Uh -huh. Next, we have like the big bodies. Like I told you, there is the card that I, I uh, added at, at last minute in the, in my list. It's Urashima. I was playing uh, kid. Uh, the the five cost, the, the the seven cost kid. Uh -huh. Uh, but the, the effect didn't help much. Uh, to have a 6k leader, it's not as, as powerful like in Purple Luffy when you when you go to 7. Uh -huh. And the effect of the Dawn minus 1, considering like uh, my, my blocker kid will most probably last very little on, on the board. Like I told you before, it's like the main target when for my opponent to remove or to kill. Uh, it didn't let me get to to that magic number of tendon where I can play like um, two five cost or one five cost and and one four uh, mm -hmm. essentially develop two two bodies on on one turn. Mm -hmm. So I got this card basically because it it places on curve you are, uh, equally, and it's uh, and it has counter. Uh, but in reality, I didn't played a lot in I think I, I did not play it in in any game. Okay. Um I believe it, it's a good card against yellow, but yellow I think I got it covered with all the cards I showed you before. So mm -hmm. I think I will try to play four X rigs and remove these two. Okay. Next are my Kaidos. I play three Kaidos. Uh, this card really requires like no explanation. It's also a staple. Mm -hmm. I mentioned before I don't like to play it on curve uh, because uh, I lose my don advantage. Right. So I mostly keep it like a finisher uh, to avoid that uh, against yellow that last uh, bigger capone uh, or something. a blocker stangy or. All. Yeah. I try to always keep it in hand and play it when when it gets the most uh, value of uh, getting off a, a blocker or and going for the for the win. This card okay. wins win me a, a lot of games and it won me the 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 last match against the, in the final against the Nel. Nice. Yeah, I wish the vods were available somewhere. I, I want to watch the matches. <laughs> I haven't watched it watch them either. Uh, they were streamed. They were streamed live, but uh, the the channel in in which they were streamed uh, didn't record uh, like the I don't know the recording uh, mm -hmm. or, or something, and can be haven't been able to to find them either. I would yeah. like to replay, so so check my mistakes. I mm -hmm. the finals I, I made a little misplay when uh, my opponent got an El Thor trigger. And I didn't run before, so oh. that's the one I remember. And and kill a, a, a body on mine. The the other big body I play is this guy. Whoa, it's spicy! <laughs> it's my little spice. It <laughs> won me in my Swiss rounds. I played against three Takatsuki, uh -huh. and two games were were won by this guy. Wow. <laughs> I'd say that's uh, it's worth my, it to run him. Yeah, it's my <laughs> anti Sakatsuki uh, spice for, for say it in some way. Uh, people not expected, not expected mm -hmm. uh, in, in the matches. Um, the in fact the the, the to have another turn, uh, it's one attack more that it's out of every calculation my my opponent my, might make. Right. So it won me the two games against Takesuki, which is, I believe, is the, is the it's my hardest matchup. I lost the the last one to when eight one the first day. Oh, okay. And you so, use them just like a finisher too, or you you never drop yeah, him oh, before that, right? Never drop him. No, no, <laughs> never drop him. Uh, I have it on uh, against the NL matchup mm -hmm. also, 
but I don't play it like with the unplayability. Oh, you just play them out as a vanilla? As a vanilla 1012. Okay. Yeah, but it's a very circumstantial play. Uh, it has won me a little games, especially since I, when he's on board, I can remove the NL, mm -hmm. the rationale. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, but... his effect. <laughs> with the Luffy exactly. on board. Yeah. With the Luffy on board. Uh, but that's mainly it. And the last things are the the event. Mm -hmm. I play free Gam Gam Jet Gatling. I don't tend to leave Dawn open, so I don't play Blast Breath. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to use all my 10 Dawn in my turn. Uh, so having a, a zero cost defensive event for me is really important. And the trigger also is really good. So. Uh, when it triggers uh, and I'm on curve, I use it almost all the time since it, it saves me one usage of the leader ability and one life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, it's really, it's really frequent, I believe, uh, to have a, a non-use card in my in my hand, uh, a card like has no counter or something. Right. So uh, it's a really good defense against a 7k attack. Or, or something like that. Okay. And the last one is uh, the other spice. It's Gibbs Horn. Ooh. Uh, it works really good, really well against most meta decks. Uh, something people really don't expect. Also for going for the game. Uh, in, uh, uh, like I told you before, the games I won with Luffy G5, uh, I used Gibbs Horn to rest the blocker also. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a card that they don't play, they don't expect, uh, I believe, and it helped me win a really, really difficult games in my Swiss rounds. Right, and it helps you get around blockers like Sabo and Borsalino too, right? Because you can't KO them. Exactly. So, uh, um, I used to play like Top Knot. Mm -hmm. Top Knot, I believe, uh, is uh, the, the name of the card, uh, mm -hmm. which is a similar card, uh, but it, it sent the bottom of the deck uh, mm -hmm. for cost mm -hmm. but i use ship horn because uh, it works really well with sabo and really well mm -hmm. in the mirror also okay so that's my deck nice that's my deck not really anything special not really anything like with a lot of spice uh, i started my list with a, a japanese players list mm -hmm. with played a, a, a really similar list and I made really little changes to, to adapt to my playstyle and it worked out really well. I believe I I don't like that list uh, where they include searchers like Hannibal mm. or uh, what is the name? Uh, Kokoro. Oh, the Water 7 one? The Water 7. Yeah. They whiff the, the, the most part of the time. Uh -huh because you you don't run like 20 cards that they are, that you can search right so uh, the deck is very consistent even if you don't have like 13 engine engines or, or a lot of draw uh, will you have like uh, uh, various cards that that you can use for the same for the same purpose mm -hmm. I feel like my game plan uh, is really consistent in most of the matchups. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I'll have to try out that uh, 10 cost Luffy too in my purple Luffy deck. Seems like uh, it does yes. work really well. <laughs> yeah, it works really well uh, against the Takasuki matchup, which I, which I believe is the, the most difficult one. Uh, um, when he gets the the tools of removal, it's like an impossible matchup. So mm -hmm. I was uh, really scared and at one point and to get uh, a lot of Takasukis. Mm -hmm. Uh, the tournament was like nine Swiss rounds, okay. uh, where I got to play three, three Sakatsukis. Uh -huh. uh, I won two. Yeah, the, and the last hardest one matchup was, out of the way. <laughs> my, I, the last one was when, when I was like 8-0. Uh -huh. So I played like I was already in the top 16. Like it was mm -hmm. my, it was already a dream to be top 16. So. Uh -huh. Uh, I played it like really, 
really easy and and my opponent uh, drew all the cards he is he's a, a top player a top player from from latin america his name is francisco and i break hard that game but it didn't matter to me so it was like okay i that's my lose to sakatsuki in the in the tournament okay. then at the top eight i i encountered another sakatsuki from another top player from argentina it was Uh, his name was Haru, and, and I, it was 2-0 in my favor. I okay. didn't even, couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I draw like crazy. It was all the all the cards, and he didn't draw anyone, anything. So that were my Sakasuki matchups, which at one point uh, it um, it made me question my deck really. Mm-hmm. It made me question my deck. Uh, I tried Red Purple Luffy on one point of my preparation because I I believe it was a, a nearly impo- impossible matchup for, for Purple Luffy. Yeah, but it seems like you defied the odds. You had a positive win rate against Sakazuki, it seems like. Yeah, I had a positive uh, record. Uh, and I realized that the one making the mistakes was not the deck, it was me. So... It, it keeps being a, a really difficult matchup. I I am really excited to to play the the European players in in the in the final that, that play Takasuki. I be, I saw that that final match. I saw uh, most part of the tournament. I saw your video of the <laughs> of the reaction of the final, and I believe both are like outstanding Takasuki players. And it's a challenge. I will most likely upset. Yeah, we'll be excited to see that in March. Yes. All right, so we'll move on to some other questions here. Um, yes. So you, you mentioned having a busy life and that means you don't have much time to go to locals and stuff. Uh, because of that, you mentioned that like watching my videos was one way that helped you prepare. Uh, do you have any other tips on how to get better at home without having to like drive out to play at locals? Yes, of course. Uh, I have a really busy life. I. I have 35 years old and I have two kids, one from, one of three years old and one of seven years old. Mm-hmm. And I have a full-time job. I am a dentist. So my time to play the game and develop the game is with cards. It's really non-existent. Mm-hmm. Prior to this, uh, to this final championship, I was able, able to attend three local tournaments. Mm-hmm where uh, i didn't win any 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 tournament i i performed really well i lose in the finals of the free ones mm-hmm. of the free ones but um, your videos really helped me prepare because it was things i could do in my in my free time at a job and my job uh, and lunch times uh, where uh the knowledge you you give to from for the deck breakdowns the the approach to the matches i believe i saw that video where you explain like when you have little mm-hmm. uh, like, I told you like video. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when i had like a week playing and it made zero sense to me <laughs> <laughs> i didn't understand that thing And then when I was a little more experienced, I I watched it again and it helped me a lot to understand situations of the game. Uh, the game plays you, you play uh, uh, helps me a lot when like when you explain why are you doing the, the thing you're doing or what is the possible other scenario. Uh, and the other thing I do, it's like watch uh, games from top players mostly from from japan mm-hmm. uh where like i think the main disadvantage of this game for us in latin america europe uh, north america is that we are two steps behind right so it takes away uh, really much of the discovering things mm-hmm. when when we when we receive the the set Or most of the tech is already discovered and you basically try to put your input or try to perfect a, a winning list mm-hmm. or a winning deck so 
I believe I I don't think that is something is going to change in the future. It's something I would like to change, but because I think the most part of this game is to discover interaction in cards and add that little spice that you that you can in your in your decks. So it helped me a lot uh, to know to to watch videos, information, deck breakdowns. And that way, uh, compensate for my for my lack of time to play real life players. Okay, yeah, that's good to know that. Yeah, you don't. There's different ways to approach training for events and tournaments and stuff like that. Yes, the sim really help also. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's a really cool uh, tool since you don't have to invest money. You can mm-hmm. play everything you you want uh, you can test everything you want you can find players from all over the world with varying skills really but uh, the new rank system that they are implementing this past month i believe is a really good idea i i couldn't play a lot the, really in the rank system before the 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 final championship but i believe it's a, a tool that I will use in the future to to test some some strategies looking forward to OPO6. Yeah, shout out to Batsu for making the sim and the people who are running the rank servers. Yeah, really upping yes. the play level Up- of people. Exactly, exactly. I don't I I don't, uh, I don't know if it's a tool they have in Japan. You 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 know? Uh I think some people know it exists, but I think it's more popular with the uh the English version of the game. Yeah. I believe it helps a lot to to test to not invest a, like a lot of money in, mm-hmm. in in cards like if you don't like something right so shout out to the guys I I, I didn't know the the guy who, who made it sorry mm-hmm. but okay. I thank you very much also and then so the worlds is going to happen in Japan in March uh I have to ask is there any food that you're excited to eat while you're there uh, uh, ramen Ramen, Ramen, I believe. Uh, yeah, I I am a big Japan Japanese fan. I have been to Japan like um, I believe ten years ago. Mm-hmm. It was a little really short time. I was uh, doing a a trip to Europe. Okay. Uh, and like the distance is is really or not really short, but but a lot shorter than down from Chile. I decided to go a week to Japan and. Uh, it was a country that amazed me. Uh, it since I was a kid, I I've always loved the Japanese culture. So really, it's a it's a dream come true to go to Japan again. I will go to I will go with my brother. Oh, nice. Uh, I don't really have any information yet <laughs> of which days I will go, well, how it will be, but. I, I believe it, they will confirm the event in the next few days, so I'm a little anxious in that in that aspect. Yeah, it must be exciting. And then, yeah, you mentioned you haven't gone in 10 years. If it's held in Tokyo, it's going to be completely different than you remember. Yeah. <laughs> I believe uh, today I, I read a rumor that it's going to be in Chiba. Oh, in Chiba? Okay, it's a little further you away. Know but... You know where it is? Yeah, it, it's closer to Narita Airport if that's where you're gonna land. But yeah, it's it's not in like Tokyo, Tokyo. It's like the prefecture next to it. But still, oh, okay. it will be exciting to go there. And ramen yeah. there is probably really good too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a, a short distance to Tokyo or something. You can so, go visit uh, for the day. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. You, like that's that. like a hour train ride, one hour train. Yeah, oh, not too okay. bad. Yeah, there's people yeah. who live in Chiba and commute to Tokyo for work, so. Uh, okay, okay. It's like a, it's like a, an annex from the from the city. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And then I have to ask: with OP zero six coming out in a month, uh, do you plan to still play Purple Luffy, or do you think you're gonna switch? Uh, really, I'm waiting for your tech break- breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like uh, Perona from the. From the uh, things I, I've seen, mm-hmm. uh, I think his ability, his ability is, is really powerful. I believe uh, Purple Luffy uh, 
will fall of the meta, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, yellow decks become really powerful. Where yeah. <laughs> it's really... It has no sense. <laughs> yeah, I believe. Even starter deck 13 will add more yellow cards. It's just crazy how much support. It's, uh, it's really... It, it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Uh, as Takasuki, the, the, the guy didn't need any, another searcher, another uh -huh. removal event, uh -huh. uh, a big a big body that, that develops too, like Moria. So mm -hmm. I don't understand really some some decisions the, the, the game made. Mm -hmm. I believe the, the meta in OPO6 will be a little more, more variant. Uh, they are mm -hmm. powerful leaders. Although we believed in OPO5 that it was mainly Sakasuki and it turned out not to be the case, at least in in this side of the world where yeah, you're a proof of, of the four <laughs> of the four final championship, uh, yeah. it was two purple Luffy's, uh, one Sakasuki and one NL. Uh -huh. So uh, I don't know. I I really don't believe uh, that purple Luffy stands a chance in in OPO6 meta. Uh, and I believe I will play uh, or Perona or Moria. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so that brings us to the end of the interview. I want to thank you for uh, taking the time out thank to you, talk man. to me. I know there's a big time difference and it's pretty late for you right now. Uh, to close out the videos, <laughs> yeah. do you have any like shout outs or do you want to plug any of your socials or anything? Yeah, I want to thank you to my store. It is Poison and Potion. It is the guys that support me all all weekend long, uh, like uh, emotional support. When uh, I passed from the first few rounds where I was really nervous to playing the finals, uh, they were all the way with me there. Um, I will shout out to my brother, uh, one of the most uh, beautiful things that has happened to me in the in, in this in these few months since I play the the game is to to deepen the bond with my brother uh, that it was really non-existent before before this. Uh, shout out to my to my friend Sebastian, which introduced me to the game <laughs> and lent me a lot of cards in in my in our first stage. Also was there in the in, in all the tournament mm -hmm. to to support me. And I will give you my social links. I didn't have any social links before this tournament. <laughs> I have an Instagram account and a Twitter account that I really basically no, had no use, had no content, uh, nothing. But I plan on, on activating those, those, two, those two accounts. So uh, I will post things uh, from, the, from Japan in the world, things from the, the prizes I won and all. Okay, yeah, looking forward to it. And um, I'll put all those links in the description below. So if you guys want to check out, check it out. Check the description. So uh, yeah, that's the interview. Uh, I want to thank you, Felipe, for taking the time out for being my first interview on my channel. Something new that I want to thank try. Thank you very much to you. It really, your channel really helped me a lot, man. You don't realize that. Yeah, glad <laughs> to hear that. All right, yeah, have a good night. You Bye. too, man. Cheers. Cardi Kaizoku.